All right, everybody, welcome back. So these are the uh, stability ball exercises for workout two. We are starting with a chest press. Come back. So we talked about these last week, so we're gonna review them real quick. On our chest press, we're gonna start seated with your dumbbells. Bring them to your chest as you walk out. Remember your starting position is rolling out far enough that your head is resting on your ball and your shoulder blades are resting on your ball, but your low back and your mid back is not. So squeeze the glutes, lift the hips nice and high. From here, the weights, remember they stay lined up over the chest and not the face. Elbows are gonna bend, hands are gonna go out nice and wide, as low as you can, trying to even lower those shoulders via back of your arms onto your ball. Squeeze them back to the top. Take them down. Press them back to the top. Back to your chest as you roll in. Be careful if you're on that garage floor that your feet don't slide. But remember our two most important things is you want to get the elbows as low as you can to open up the chest and shoulders and work that really low range. And the second is that you always want your hands lined up over your chest and not your face. All right, the next is our dumbbell pullover. It's been a while since we've done this one, so some review here. You've got options on your weights. If you have a heavy enough weight, holding on to one of them is perfectly fine. You can also use a kettlebell. Um, if you don't have heavy weights, if you have like eight and under, try hanging on to both dumbbells together. So I've got a 15, and I also have a 30-pound um, kettlebell. I would use either one. They would work fine. Obviously the 30 pound kettlebell would be more challenging, but for the sake of the video, I'm going to stick with my 15. So I'm going to walk forward to the exact same setup as the chest press. So I'm going to walk on out. Again, my hips are up high. My head and my shoulder blades are resting on the ball. So hanging on to a single weight, you can hang on to the outsides of your dumbbell. You can bring it in together and hang on to the handle. Completely up to your comfort level on this. From here, the arms are going to start over the shoulders, so not all the way forward over your chest or over your rib cage, but right over your shoulders, almost as if you're staring straight up at that weight. So on our dumbbell pullover, we're going to allow the arms to open as far back as you can, really trying to open the armpits. And keeping the hips up high, you're going to squeeze back to the top. So things that you're looking for, number one, you've got a slight bend in your elbows. They're not locked out. Number two, abs and hips are super tight as you move so that when you pull back over, your hips don't drop. Once your hips drop, it's gravity doing the work to get that weight back up and not your muscles. So hips stay up nice and high. The third important thing to watch for is that the weight only comes back over your face. Don't bring it up over the chest at all. Once you pass the line of your face, you are no longer engaging your lap muscles or your shoulder muscles. All you're gonna end up engaging uh, is gravity, which engages itself. So it's not helping you out at all. Keep it back behind to keep the work going through the lats and the triceps and the shoulder area. All right, so from there we flip over to our plank rollout, which we've done multiple times. Remember, ultimately, we want to be up on the feet, forearms on the ball, abs in nice and tight, and the movement is that small roll away, shifting the ball forward. Remember your options. You can keep it in the plank. You can also drop to the knees and roll from there. What's most important is that you're not allowing any kind of low back pain or pressure. So if you feel low back pain and you engage the abs and the low back pain is still there, then you need to bring your intensity down a notch to either just a plank or to your knees on the rollout. The other most important thing is that you're always staying in that straight line. A lot of times what happens, people drop to their knees and automatically the hips come back every time. It's a natural position. It's a lot harder to hold that plank. So when you roll back, it's only the ball rolling back underneath you. It's not 
the book. All right, two we go. Hip bridge. Done multiple times. But as a review, remember this is the bridge, not the rollout. So it's the bottom of your shoes on your ball. Okay? Not the back of your legs. From here, the ball's not moving, just our hips. So hips tuck under, abs and glutes squeeze tight, press down, and lower. If your hamstrings cramp, then you need to engage your glutes more. Squeeze the glutes like there's no manana, and keep them squeezed when you lift. If you can isolate those glutes and really plug them in nice and tight, then you should not cramp your hamstring. If you cramp your hamstring anyway, stick your leg in the air, stretch it out for a second. You may need to break down to your hip bridge just on the floor and not on the ball. But most of us should be able to keep the bridge going on the ball. Just tighten your glutes super tight. Last one on the list are wipers. This one is ball between anywhere like mid-calf up to the shoe, slight bend in the knees, palms are up to the ceiling, arms out. Remember, we're rotating as far as you can without the opposite shoulder coming up. So I'm going as far as I can before that left shoulder tries to pop off the ground, and then I gotta pull it back to the top. Switching sides as far as I can, pull back to the top. When you go to pull back to the top, Remember that our goal is to work our core and our obliques on this one. So focus on lifting back up through those muscle groups. If you're not thinking about it, it's not the end of the world, but you'll end up using all kinds of other things. You'll use the back of the arm that's on the opposite side. You'll use the back of your, uh, back of your neck and your shoulder blades kind of pressing into the ground. You'll pull from your hip a little bit more. We want to work those inner thighs and the obliques on this one. So really focus on what you're working with when you pull. All right, guys, that is the end of your workout two exercises. I hope you have an awesome workout. See you soon.